There will be a few times throughout this year that you're asked to write a letter as part of a lesson or for a project. And even though writing a letter probably isn't used as much nowadays as it has been in the past as a means of communication, since there's things like email and texting, it's still a very good skill to have. So we're going to quickly go over the important parts of a letter, and I'll give you an example at the end to help wrap it all up for you. Now, the most important element of writing a good letter is your ability to identify and write to your audience. If you're writing a letter to your love interest, it's going to be crafted in an entirely different manner than if you're writing a letter to a human resources department of a large corporation. Learning to write a good letter also takes practice, knowledge about proper form, and the ability to put into words your feelings, thoughts, and or ideas. So if you learn the basic parts of a letter, it will help you create letters for a variety of audiences and occasions. Now, the presentation of a letter can be handwritten for informal letters or friendly letters that are addressed to friends and family members, and especially thank you letters. If you have really poor or illegible handwriting, though, you may want to consider typing your letter out. For formal letters that are written on behalf of businesses or to professional contacts, business letters should always be typed. The letter should also be free of grammatical and spelling errors, so proofreading it after it's been written is of the utmost importance. So let's talk about the parts of a letter. Well, first, there needs to be the date. You put the date on which the letter was written in the format of the month, day, and year. So for example, you would put June 7, 2014. Then you need the greeting, and the greeting is going to address the individual that the letter is being sent to. And this is usually in the form of like, Dear Anne or Hey Anne for less formal letters. Next, you have the introductory paragraph. This first paragraph will generally outline the purpose of the letter and the reason that the letter is being sent. This can address any issues that are outstanding and is used to set the tone for the entire rest of the letter. In this first paragraph, the summary of the letter can be found and the intentions which will be displayed throughout the rest of the letter should be outlined. From the first paragraph of the letter, the introductory paragraph, the individual should be able to note the tone of the letter. Next you have the body. The body of the letter will expand upon the introductory paragraph and the individual can extend their thoughts and feelings further when it comes to the letter. The body of the letter can be anywhere from multiple pages for personal letters to one page or two page for most business letters or other types of proposals. And then you need to always have the closing. In the closing of the letter, the individual will close the letter and finish any thoughts that have been mentioned. The closing of the letter comes in various forms from yours truly, for those individuals that are familiar with one another, to a traditionally sincerely, which is a versatile closing that can be used in a variety of letters detailing many situations. So let's look at the example that I created for you. You'll note here that up in the top left hand corner I have the date. Then I have my greeting which is Dear Santa. Next comes my introduction paragraph which says, As I'm sure you're aware, Christmas time is nearing once again and I recently realized that I haven't sent you my Christmas wish list yet. I wanted to do that now because I know that you'll get extremely busy in the upcoming weeks and there's some really important things that I have on my Christmas list this year. So what I've done here is I've introduced the purpose of my letter and I've kind of set the tone. Next we'll move on to the body of the letter. First and foremost, I would like to say that I'm grateful for anything that I get for Christmas. However, if you're feeling especially generous and have noticed that I've been extremely good this entire year, I would be thrilled to find a new car under my tree. Now, I know that seems like a big ticket item, but you've been able to pull off some pretty spectacular presents in the past, so I thought that I would just throw this idea out there. If a car is out of the question, then the next thing on my list is a French Bulldog. I think that they're especially cute and have the perfect temperament that would suit me perfectly. Now, if this option still isn't feasible for you, I do have a third wish on my list. I would be happy with a nice pair of fuzzy new slippers. I have wood floors in my house and my feet get really chilly in the winter, so having something cozy like that would make me extremely happy. I wear a size six and a half, by the way. So what I've done here in the body paragraphs is I've given more detail. I set the tone in the introduction, and then I've given more detail and more specifics on really what I want to address in this letter. And then we move on 
to the closing. I hope this letter finds you well. Please send my regards to Mrs. Claus. Sincerely, which is your closing, and then my name. I hope that this has helped clear up how the letter should be written when you're given this task. And as always, if you have any questions, please do let me know.